All right, guys, we're going to get started on learning module one and two and any questions you guys might have. Um, I can see what you're typing as I'm working. So by all means, as questions come up, just go ahead and type them in there and I'll make sure that I read through them and answer them as I go. Um, I am going to, does anyone have any questions they want me to do from learning module one? Okay. Email submitting my to be assignment. Um, was it a question about how to do it? Oh, you needed me to clear something, correct, Eric? I'll do that as soon as we're done with the study session, okay? So yes, I did get that. Um, so it sounds, it looks like nobody really has any questions for learning module one. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead to Learning Module 2. And uh, you guys, like I said, can ask me questions as we get it. I am, I'm just going to go ahead to Section 2F because that section seems to kind of summarize the whole chapter. It puts the whole order of operations together with the positive and negative numbers. So that's where I'm going to go ahead and start. <clears throat> And um, if you guys don't have any questions, it'll be a short, short session. If you do have questions, it'll be a little longer. All right. So bear with me. Let's see here. I'm going to go for my pen. Let me change the color. I'm going to go black for now. Okay, so I'm going to skip around. I'm not going to do all of the questions in the whole section. I'll, I will skip around. If I feel like it's the same exact type of problem, I'll skip it. Um, and again, if you guys need me to do more of a certain type of problem, just let me know, okay? So in this problem here where you see negative 2 to the fourth power and the negative and the 2 are inside of the parentheses, that means that everything inside of the parentheses is going to go to the fourth power. So it's important that you keep those parentheses going so you don't misinterpret what the problem is really asking you to do. <coughs> So this one is a final answer of just 16. Um, so just to kind of put you, put it out there, if it was negative 2 to the fourth power without the parentheses, um, the answer would turn out a little bit different because I'm only going to raise the 2 to the fourth power and the negative sign kind of gets left out. So this would actually be a negative 16. You really want to look out for the difference between when there is parentheses and when there isn't. Do you guys have any questions about that? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Let's see what the next problem looks like. And uh, the next problem is exactly the example I was uh, showing you guys a second ago. Um, I'm just going to do this one anyway, just to further emphasize the importance of that parentheses. This, again, the whole thing is cubed, so you do get a positive 4 there, but it's going to end up being a negative 8 at the end of the day. Like I said, just go ahead and jump in there if, if, you, if there's something you want me to do. Number 7, okay. So let me just see what these look like in between. This is talking about the exact thing I was sharing with you guys. I'm going to go ahead and do this one just to make sure you guys see it. This one here is negative 4 times a negative 4, which is a positive 16. But this one, since there's a negative in front as well, this part gives you the negative 4 times the negative 4, but then when that negative sign comes down, even though this is a positive 16, it still ends up being negative. All right, I'm going to do number 6 and number 7. So here we have, um, I just want to make sure I mention this, 
this is the kind of stuff you guys should have in your notebooks or your portfolio. The top of the section should be labeled properly, to set 2F, integers and order of operations. This would be question number six. You would write the problem out in its entirety, show all of the work, whereas this would be three minus four times four. Since multiplication comes before anything else, we're going to do 16 minus comes down the 3. 3 minus the 16 gives me a negative 13. And number 7. Okay, this is a good one. Um, when you have order of operations, you always want to work what's ever inside your brackets or your parentheses first. And inside of here, I have minus 3 minus a minus 5. So right off the bat, we want to go ahead and simplify these two minus signs. This is really going to be 6 brackets negative 3 plus 5 brackets plus 2. We would continue this inside here until we're done. Here we're going to get a positive 2. My answer is in the brackets. Bring down the 6. Bring down the plus 2. And this is 6 times 2 which is 12, plus the 2, it's going to give me a 14. Did that help? Or would you like me to do another one? Okay. I'm sure there's more. The problems tend to get a little harder as you go down the page. So let's see here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this one. Okay, so again, we have brackets, right? But inside the brackets, we also have more parentheses. So we're going to actually go to the innermost set first. So this negative 8 squared, since the negative 8 is in parentheses, it is negative 8 times negative 8, which is going to give me a positive 64. And then it's 64 minus the 6. So that's going to give us a 58, right? So now, let's just rewrite the stuff we have left. We have a negative 2 plus 2 brackets 6 plus 7 parentheses. I got a 58 from all that work. And I'm going to close my brackets like so. What do you guys think I should do next? What do you guys think I should do next? Go ahead, take a guess. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to multiply the 7 times the 58, which is going to give me 406. I'm going to bring down the stuff I didn't use yet. I'm still working on this. So 406 plus another 6 is going to give me 412. So again, I have this negative 2 plus 2 brackets, 412 brackets. What do you guys think I'm going to do next? What do you guys think I should do next? Again, I'm going to multiply two times, exactly two times the 412 is going to give me an 824. And then we don't want to forget about that guy. So it's negative 2 plus 824, but even though it's a plus, am I going to add, or what am I going to do? No, I'm not going to add. Very good. I'm going to actually subtract because they have different signs. I have a negative 2 and a positive 824, so my final answer is going to be a positive 822. Keep the higher sign. Very good, guys. Any questions on that one? Okay. I'm just going to keep it moving. Let's see what these look like. It's pretty much the same that we did before. Let's go ahead and do this one. So again, we have brackets, but then we also have parentheses inside. Yeah, you definitely, these problems aren't hard, but they're tedious, which means take your time, write slowly, give yourself enough space, don't try to squeeze stuff in, just really take your time. Um, so here, I have to do what's inside here first, so I get negative 4 plus 1, which is going to give me what? 
What's negative 4 plus 1? Very good. So I'm going to get a negative 3 right there. Okay, but um, what do you guys think I should do next? Because that's all that there was to do inside of here. Very good. I'm going to do the exponent. So I'm going to get negative 3 squared, which is going to give me what? What's negative 3 squared going to give me? 9. Very good, because it's a negative times a negative. Next, I'm going to come here. Negative 3 times a 9 is a negative 27. Bring down the 5 and the minus sign. 5 minus 27 is going to give me a negative 22. And again, when that negative sign comes down, my final answer will be a positive 22. Very good. Very good. Any questions about that one? All right. Let's see what else we got here? Number 14. All right, let's go to number 14. Okay. So in this one, you want to make sure, okay, we have a set of parentheses here, a set of brackets here, and then parentheses with just a number inside. So technically, if I want to be really, really strict about the rules, you should always work from left to right. Just like you read sentences in a book. You kind of start on the left-hand side and you work your way over. Um, since both of these are in parentheses, I really could do these at the same time, right? Negative 7 plus 13 is going to give me what? Not a negative 6. We're going to always take the sign of the highest number, right? Very good. So I'm going to get a 6 right here. And then this is my plus sign. And what do I get right here? 3 plus a negative 11. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, what's 3 plus a negative 11? What's that going to give me? Very good. Take the sign of the higher number. I'm going to go ahead and get a negative 8. Do I really need to write plus minus 15? What could I write instead to shorten it up a little? Right, I could just write minus 15. Just like right here, I don't have to write plus minus 8. I could just write 6 minus 8 minus 15. 6 minus 8 is going to go ahead and give me a negative 2. Negative 2, bring down the minus 15. What's my final answer going to be, guys? Look at it one more time. There you go. We're going to add them together. That's right. Since they're both negative numbers, we keep the sign and we add them together. All right. Let's see what number 15 looks like. It's a pretty similar problem. So let's go ahead and work this one too. So again, two sets of brackets. I can pretty much do them simultaneously. A negative 4 plus a negative 11. Am I going to add or subtract these? I'm going to add them. Very good. I'm going to get negative 15 plus 2 plus a negative 5, which is really 2 minus 5. is going to give me a minus 3. And I'm just going to bring down that negative 15 again. Very good, guys. You're doing a great job participating. Now, technically, since all of my numbers here are negative and all I have left is addition and subtraction, since they're all negative, that means I'm going to add them all together. 15 and 50 give me 30. 30 and 3 give me 33. Keep the sign. Very good. Any questions about that? Very good. Um, well... I believe this was the hardest section in the whole chapter. Is there is there anything else you guys want me to go over? Um, the final word problem. In this section or... Oh, I didn't see there was more. Never mind. I thought there was only 15. I think that one looks pretty easy. Let me erase. 
um, though. So let's see, 16, 17. I just want to see what these look like before I skip over them. These are pretty easy. What about this one? You guys okay with this one? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it thinking the same thing. Like, why are the problems getting easier? Um, all right, let's just get to the word problem. All right, so it says over, let me get my pen out, over a five-week period, the price of an MP3 player dropped steadily from 170 to 120. What signed number represents the average weekly change in the price of the MP3 player? Okay, the average weekly change. So... That should be pretty good. Um, now, what I'm thinking is, what sign number? Yeah, okay. So 170 to 120 means it changed by how much money? How much money did it go down in total? 50 bucks. And how many weeks was it? Five. So if I want to do the average, I'm dividing 50 by five, so I should get, it should be about negative ten dollars right because it didn't go up it went down right and I think that's why it was very specific when it said signed number because if the price dropped that would not indicate a positive number it would indicate a negative number so I'm gonna go ahead and type in negative ten and see if it likes my answer there we go Take your time, read the instructions really well. You got to read them a couple times. Um, you know, same thing here. So now we have a seven week period. The price dropped. So again, we're talking about a negative 174 and 90. So 174 minus 90 is 84, right? And then we have 84 over a seven week period. So we have uh, $12 a week, but again, it went down exactly. So it's going to be a negative 12. <clears throat> All right. So what do you guys think? Do you have more questions? Do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm glad you're excited. Um, is there something else you guys want me to um, go over? And again, all the learning module one and two is due. On, by Saturday at midnight, I did notice that there was quite a few people who did not even start learning module two. That is not a good start. Um, Saturday will sneak up on you before you know it, and I'll be typing in zeros on Sunday and Monday, and all of a sudden, you're not doing well. So uh, make sure you get through them all. Keep in mind that even though I have the competency checks on your um, to-do list, these do stay open the entire semester, so you can keep working on these. So make these a priority and make this a priority because these are due no later than Saturday. Okay, these you can kind of start and go back to if you need to. All right. Is there anything else you guys want me to go over? I see Sierra's here, Eric, Keen, Melissa, Thomas. You guys have anything else you want me to talk about? Yes, you can start the next module. Learning Module 3 is available if you guys want to um, get a head start. It is open. It is there. It, there's definitely nothing wrong with um, getting a head start. Decimals and percents and fractions can be a headache for some people, so... You can see there's quite a few sections in Chapter 3, as well as competency checks and a time management project. Um, I will schedule another session probably Monday of next week 
um, that will specifically be for Learning Module 3, so you guys can watch out for that. Um, other than that, I got nothing. So if you guys are good, I'm good. I can go ahead and start recording this short video I'm, or putting this short video on YouTube. Excuse me. You're welcome, Melissa. Thank you for joining me. Um, is anybody else? You sure no one else wants to throw a question out there? Maybe about the course or something else? All right. Thank you, Thomas. Um, you know, keep in mind, again, this class is only six weeks long. Um, August 4th sneaks up on us really, really quickly. And that is the last, it's like a Tuesday. That's your last day to take a final. It's your last day to do any competency checks. Um, many of you have been texting me and emailing me. Keep the communication up. Um, that's, how you, that's how you pass the class, by making sure you get your questions answered as soon as you have them. Um, and like I said, I'm here if you need me. I'm on Osceola campus Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning if you want to meet in person. And I also live near the East Campus. So just keep me posted, okay? Talk to you guys soon. Good night.